Well, good morning, everybody. Are we waiting for anybody? Excellent. So hello, I'm Andrew Badger, and today Samuel Biebelhauser and I will be representing Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab uh, from the DART flight software team, presenting on the space wire analysis tool we've generated that uses KaiTai and Wireshark. So I've specified some of the contributors on the project, and there is the laser pointer. So anyways, what are we walking through today? Today I'm going to go over the DART mission, which is something that Luis talked about yesterday. And then I'm going to go over the problem in flight software that we're trying to tackle with this message definition language called KaiTai that we'll explain more in a moment. And then we're going to go through what KaiTai is, a case study of how we would use this if you were given a new ICD and you had to interact with a new message type in flight software, your ground system, and in specific, in space wire analysis. Then we'll go over some of the so what, some of the conclusions, and then we'll break for questions. So DART is the double asteroid redirection test funded out of the Planetary Defense Coordination Office from NASA. Luis talked about this a lot yesterday, and if you were there, this is going to be a repeat. But the idea is to send a spacecraft hurtling into a binary asteroid system and smacking the smaller asteroid at six kilometers per second, changing its orbit. From the outer white orbit to the inner blue orbit. The idea being that we will be able to see this change in orbit, and this is a technical demonstration on how to deal with impacts. So if an asteroid is actually coming towards Earth, which these are not, this is one type of tool we could potentially use for handling that situation. And this brings us to kind of why I'm here, what is DART flight software. So this is the flight software workshop. Flight software is embedded software running on a spacecraft that helps people interact with these systems. On DART, outside of writing C code, the flight software team is also helping integrate different subsystems, helping with testing, and overall being some of the glue. And part of that, is in synchronizing data definitions and messages and commands across all the disparate teams working on the mission. This is not a comprehensive list, but what I was trying to get at is we have teams, we have ground software, flight software, testbed software, instrument leads, all these people have their own needs, their own goals, their own responsibilities. But ultimately, in the end, everyone needs to agree on what the messages look like as they pinball their way through the spacecraft. And this is largely done with documents. We have ICDs, we have people going to meetings, we have requirements, we have everyone coming to a consensus on what these messages look like, and it works. But what we're trying to do here is couple them through data. The idea being that if you can machine couple all these data definitions, then there is one place that you end up changing a message and it can then propagate through all of your systems at once. And it can ultimately couple some of your design and implementation. And the places where this would be useful come up when you're designing your flight software applications and libraries. It comes up when you start integrating between subsystems in flight software. And it comes up whenever something changes. When, during testing, you come up with something that needs to update on flight software to properly interact with a subsystem. And for what we're talking about today, the biggest impact that we're going to be talking about is when you start testing. When you start bringing in the subject matter experts for the test from the individual teams participating, and they all need to agree, and everyone needs to figure out whether or not their system is working. Now the tool that we're working with today and the buzzword I've said over and over again without explaining until now is KaiTai. Now KaiTai is an open source message definition language. We did not invent it. But the idea is it fills a similar role as Google protocol buffers or JSON if you're familiar with those with a key difference. This message definition language does not specify 
the ordering of the data after it's been serialized. What this means is if I'm handed a black boxed instrument or other piece of software that I cannot change, that I have no control over, I can write a chi tai definition which will be able to interact with its described interfaces. This capability means that we don't need to force other teams to use this tool in order for us to use it. As a result of this, the Dart Flight Software team has been implementing its non-heritage messages in Kaitai this past year. And we have developed tool chains that start from these Kaitai definitions, these KSY files, and can generate different targets. We can produce C code, which goes which allows you to write serializers and deserializers. And by write, I mean they are generated for you to use. There's and they translate between an unaligned structure and memory and a serialized byte buffer that can be transported over the wire to an instrument. And I really need to figure out where this laser pointer is. There, OK. We can also generate XLS workbooks that we use to generate telemetry databases for the Cosmos ground system for SWILL and for the L3 ground system for our test beds. And finally, the primary topic of today's conversation, we can generate Wireshark Lua scripts for dissectors. Uh, just a general feel of the room, are people familiar with what Wireshark is in general? I, I saw a lot of hands, but for those who are not, it's a network protocol analyzer. It's an, open it's an open source tool, it's very popular. And what it allows you to do is record network traffic over an interface. In this case, we're gonna be talking about the space wire bus and allows you to search and investigate individual messages. So today I'm gonna to be going through a s sample example. And we're gonna be talking about this new packet format that we've been given. We've been given an ICD that describes a message called the Flight Software Workshop Data Format. It has four fields. It has a presentation ID, which has 32 bits. It then has a two two-byte quantities for the awesomeness level. It has a magnitude and it has a duration for its level of awesomeness, followed by the number of questions asked at the end of the presentation. The idea being, we've just been told that this is a message that I care about, that I need to support in my ground system, flight software, and that I'm gonna wanna look at on a space wire bus. So the first thing I'm gonna do with KaiTai is produce a definition file. So this is one, what one looks like for this message type. And I've broken out the three big pieces. It has a section for meta information, which has the unique identifier an NDNS and a folder it goes in, followed by the actual ordering of bytes that will be transmitted over the wire or dissected with Wireshark. And you can see it has a four byte presentation ID, an awesomeness level, and questions asked. And then we have a section for subtypes because Kaitai allows you to inject definitions that you've already created over and over again to allow reuse. And here we have specified the two bytes for the magnitude and the duration. And this is all of the fields broken out individually. The only thing I'd like to call out here is that this tool allows you to import other definitions and allows you to specify endiness and just to go back to the KSY file that we've called out for this ICD, we have our four byte presentation ID, our two two byte pieces of our awesomeness level, and our one byte questions asked field. So we have defined our KSY file. The next piece of this is to actually pa run it through a tool chain and get out a Wireshark plugin for people to use to properly dissect this message if it's been recorded in Spacewire. So what does that look like? That looks like a blob of Lua code that I have removed all the comments from. But the idea being is that we don't have to write this ourselves. It gets produced for us. You put it in a plugins folder, you open Wireshark, and you can start running with it. And it pretty much declares a Wireshark protocol. It initializes the header fields, because the Wireshark plugin ecosystem has a concept of a header field. It's the same thing as declaring, it's sort of like declaring a variable. It specifies which strings can be present in your Wireshark UI, what fields are searchable in Wireshark, and then we have our actual dissector that gets executed. 
when this message is picked up by the application, and it strips off the four byte presentation ID, strips off the two two byte quantities for the awesomeness level by calling a different Wireshark dissector, and then it strips off the questions asked. Now what this ultimately looks like in Wireshark, once we've gotten our recording and open it up, is this. In the bottom, we have the highlighted data, which is the raw information that was picked up over the space wire bus in this case. And we have configured Wireshark to process everything as this white software workshop message. And you can see that it's using the plugin we described on the last slide. And it has our four fields. It has our presentation ID. It has our awesomeness level, which has its magnitude and its duration, along with questions asked. And this is after opening a PCAP file that you moved to your machine. One thing I'd like to call out is that each of these fields, every single one of these strings, is something you can actually search on at the top of the file, because those are our header fields. And that gives you the ability to quickly down select a large network capture recording into only the data you care about. So we've now gone through this toy example, and now we need to talk a little more about how the rubber meets the road, how we'd actually use this on Dart to analyze space wire data. So, Sam? Uh, thanks, Andrew. So I'm Sam Beeblehauser, also part of the Dartfly software team. And like Andrew mentioned, I'm going to work to take you guys from the theoretical, the why and how we use KaiTai, into um, applying that to looking at KaiTai, how it's affected the Dartfly software team. Um, and that starts with Spacewire and what the KSY breakout for Spacewire looks like. Um, so Spacewire is an international hardware and wire protocol for, net for spacecraft network communications. It's the primary spacecraft, uh, it's the primary data transfer bus for DART. That's why the DART flight software team cares. And so most of this definition should look fairly familiar. Andrew just talked you through one. But in this case, I'm going to call out a couple specific parts that change when they're applied or are different. So uh, the idea is space wire because it's a space wire message. Uh, after that, we import two definitions. So uh, CSPTP, uh, the Consultative Committee for Space Data Systems, it, that's CCSDS, defined a packet transfer protocol, which is the PTP. And so that is an imported definition, meaning there is another KSY file that this one is bringing into it. And we'll come back to that later in a minute. Our map is also a defined protocol that most of the room is probably familiar with, the remote memory access protocol which is used to uh, read and write two registers on various different devices. And so these are both imported, and now we're getting to the packet layout a little bit, where the first thing defined is a protocol ID. This is a defined part of Spacewire that defines what the rest of the message is. So in this case, um, we'll go down to the data now. That's one byte long, and the data is a type that is switched on the protocol ID. What that means is that it looks at that protocol ID, and based on what it is, we'll dissect the remainder of the message as a CSPTP or RMAP message. So as you continue dissecting, you can see how these break out into a lot of different pieces. And the, so at the top here, you look at a Spacewire message, and Spacewire breaks out be based on the protocol ID into an RMAP or CSPTP message. After that, you can continue breaking it out piece by piece and dissecting further and further based on your imported definitions. So you have different RMAP types where you have reads and writes. You have um, the data following that where you have transaction IDs and then you have app IDs under CSPTP messages. So uh, th this has been a big overview, but now I, I want to get into how Dart has analyzed spacewire traffic. Uh, especially pre-2019. So what was what did our pipeline look like, look like originally? So I'm going to draw your attention to the, the graphic at the bottom, and I'll hit most of the bullets along the way. So like Andrew mentioned, you start with getting uh, all of your leads, uh, a test lead, a flight software person, an avionics person, any relevant harbor people into a room, and you conduct a test. Uh, then we have these four links recorders. Uh, four links is a company in the UK that makes space wire recorders. All the data is saved on these and you have to get someone from avionics to extract the data. And then you have a guru, that's what I'm calling it. So a guru is someone who is knowledgeable both about uh, the binary format the space wire recordings are saved in, and knowledgeable about a positive delivery format that everyone can consider easily. So this person has to write a parser, is po possibly pulled aside with their knowledge to write a parser, and then writes that parser and 
translates the data and hands it back to the test lead where then success is evaluated. So I talked through all this to make two points. The first is that it was not easy. But the second is that this person in the loop, that this guru introduces the possibility for, uh, possibility for a lot of change, possibility for mistakes and other issues. So um, now to give a little more context, let's, look, let's talk through this a little bit and especially how it's changed with an actual message. So um, we'll start with some background. One of flight software's responsibilities is synchronizing spacecraft time. This is done with the mission elapsed time or the MET and 50 times a second, the SBC requests this from the spacecraft interface card or the SCIF. So um, glancing at the left, that diagram breaks it out into all of its pieces. It is a spacewire message. It is an RMAP message. In this case, we will look at an RMAP read request and read reply, which is a read command and read reply. Uh, the request will contain the, the transaction ID requesting the MET data, and then the reply will contain the actual MET data. So let's look at this in Wireshark broken out. Uh, I'm going to go through this piece by piece, uh, but I want to start with the very bottom. The very bottom is the raw data. So you have 0, 01, 0, 0, 4, 0, and to the naked eye, that doesn't necessarily mean anything unless you know Spacewire like the back of your hand. So to dissect this, uh, you have to either have a parser that can handle it and give it to you and break it out for you in any number of ways, or you have to have the Spacewire ICD up right next to it. But in this case, as we go through this, you'll see that the Wireshark tool that's been produced here almost describes it for you. You can almost make sense of it without any knowledge of Spacewire, and that's something special. Uh, so the first thing you see is Spacewire. That indicates it is a Spacewire message. That's the pro um, and then the SCIF logical address follows that, uh, which that has been defined in the Kaitai infrastructure, so that's why Wireshark knows that that's the SCIF logical address. And then there's that protocol ID that we mentioned, which identifies this as an RMAP message. So the rest of this is dissected as an RMAP message, which was another imported KSY definition. So um, the read command is broken out next. That's the RMAP instruction. And I briefly want to highlight a cool functionality of Wireshark where it'll break out bit by bit what all the different pieces mean. So in this case, you pull those three lines together uh, to be a read increment command and Following that, we have the SBC logical address, which is the initiator logical address, and then the transaction sequence, um, which I also want to take a moment to note that the transaction sequence is defined per RMAP protocol. However, in this case, Dart is using it to break out a, tr a shorter transaction sequence and a transaction app ID. And so this app ID is variable for each command, and in this case, it is a spacewire time request app ID, which makes sense. That's what the read request is supposed to be. So glancing at the next slide, um, this is the read reply, which I'm not going to go through every bit as much as I did before, um, but I want to highlight a couple pieces that are different or changed. Um, the logical addresses have switched, which makes sense because the target and initiator have switched, that because this is the read reply. Um, each uh, piece of the read command is still broken out, and this time it says that it is a read reply. And then the transaction sequence and transaction app ID are the same, which again, they should be because it is the read reply to the same command. And finally, at the bottom, we have the met time. This is the data broken out into seconds and subseconds, and all of this has been defined in our Kaitai infrastructure. So how has this changed the way we go about debugging spacewire traffic? Well, we'll focus on the graphic at the bottom again. I'll hit most of the bullets as we go. Uh, everyone still has to get together per to perform the test. That's the same as before. But now, the st step two is let's view the spacewire data. All of the four links, uh, uh, the four links recorder is now saving data into the precap format. And the PCAP format can be directly opened. The, the data is being saved and you double click on that file and it opens into the view that you just saw, where it's broken out piece by piece and described intimately. And so then the test lead opens that data and can evaluate success. Testing focuses on analysis of parsed data instead of on parsing the data. So uh, this slide is a direct comparison and I want to highlight two things. The first is that that guru who has a lot of knowledge of other pieces of the spacecraft no longer has to be pulled away from other important things to write a parser. And the second piece of this is that you save so much time not having to finagle the data, not having to do different things, that you, potentially, you save a lot of te uh, test bed time and testing time. Uh, hardware scarcity has been mentioned several times. I know Will is the most preferred method to, to test and to debug, and this helps you save time because you can open the data directly and look at it. 
So all of this to say, uh, pulling that human out of the loop goes all the way back to our initial message where we are working hard to make a data definition system that is machine coupled across all of the different systems that go into a spacecraft. And uh, this has been a strong first step and the Wireshark application is only one of the applications of this tool, but um, there's still work to be done, but it's been, a, it's been an exciting first step. Uh, so we'd like to say thank you to the NASA Planetary Defense Coordination Office, which uh, is a DART sponsor. Uh, thank you to APL and the DART team, and of course the Flight Software or Workshop Organizing Committee and uh, NASA Marshall for hosting. Uh, so what questions are there? Wow, you finished like five minutes before. <laughs> right on the button. Uh, so first of all, thank you Sing this working. Uh, thanks for showing uh, the Kai Tai format. I, I'd never heard of it. Uh, so m my question is specific to Kai Tai versus Protobuf. I use Protobufs a lot. And in terms of memory usage on the wire, is it is, is Kai Tai similar to Protobuf, sh smaller? And if you were to design a system today, would you use Kai Tai or Protobuf if heritage was not a problem? If heritage was not a problem, it would be a much tougher decision. We originally chose Kai Tai because of the heritage issue, and the reason we could is exactly what you're talking about with the wire utilization because in those definition files, you are determining your wire utilization because when you're defining those four and two byte quantities, that is the ordering there because you can describe it exactly. I don't know how pro what type of utilization guarantees protocol buffers guarantees, but unless they are compressing the messages beyond the actual lengths described, I don't think it's going to be more wire efficient. Yeah, so quickly, uh, Protobuf does allow you to compress some uh, some integers, but it, yeah, it's, a bit, it's a bit confusing, but it is possible in some specific ways. Oh, okay. Other questions? Yeah, I just wanted to tag on that. Uh, I think the Google Protobufs, it uses headers and stuff, and it's not things that you would see on the wire, particularly, uh, that tell you, okay, this is that type of message or the other or whatever. Um, so I don't know if it always maps directly to something that's on the wire. Um, so I, I like the idea of, of Kai Tai. It looks like it's just the straight stuff on the wire. Um, I like the Wireshark, um, but it's good to know that it's, it's, it's a it's a concept of, of going across all these things. So what is um, what is your going forward for uh, applying this to a, a full direct to analysis sort of solution? Might need to clarify the question. A direct to analysis? Yeah, so you run a test, you get data, and you run it through a tool sure. that does analysis. Um, Wireshark isn't. You know, um, you know, as a visual thing, it's not uh, no, something you want to like. Oh, I'll, I'll gooey scrape this thing and mm -hmm. <laughs> you know act on that. Um, so just uh, maybe okay. a little few words on that. Sure. All right. So you're completely right. Wireshark does not input PCAP output test result. It is an interface for people to interrogate a data collection for whatever tests they are performing. For analysis pipelines where, you, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, there's, uh, I've been doing some work with PCAP files in Python and API and Heritage, so I think Yeah, that was the, yeah. so the, there's a wire, there's a command line tool called T-Shark, which exposes the same backend of Wireshark and uses the same plugin ecosystem, which means you get to leverage these auto-generated utilities on the command line, and that way you can create one-shot automated analysis pipelines. So, um, as a as a rep on the CCB for uh, Core Flight software, it'd be nice to see this sort of analysis uh, be done, or you know, sort of not analysis, but 
um, be done with the uh, core uh, with CC CCSDS and and I, I was actually just put in a ticket for SBN because um, when you you know especially with SBN you're doing stuff over networks that you need you such as space wire hopefully at some point I'm not I'm not sure if anyone's doing that yet but for um, CCSDS messages oh for SBN is a is a is a way of bridging uh, multiple CFS instances okay so uh, it's basically just a tiny wrapper around CCSDS mm -hmm. plus a an auto subscription framework. So subscriptions on one nodes goes to the other nodes. Sure. So so there's a protocol and 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 so analyzing that protocol can you know it's not hard. It's a very simple header set. But sure, it can be done. Then it, it, I, you know, if you guys would be willing to, I'd be happy to work with you guys on on doing that. Yeah, I'd love to talk to you after the meeting. Yeah. Sure. Oh. Um, have you all submitted your Kaisai to Wireshark Dissector tooling upstream? We have not. Are you going to? <laughs> it is an open question, and we're looking into it. Okay. It looks really useful, so I'd yeah. love to use it. Thank you. Okay. Maybe one more. Anybody else? Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you.